We're here at Pocket Gamer Connects 2018 in San Francisco. I'm joined by Doran Kagan of DMedia and Game of Wales. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Now, you're uh, somewhat of a serial entrepreneur, I would say. What led you to found DMedia and get into mobile gaming in the first place? That's a long and uh, <laughs> very far in the history story. So we've started in 2003 just by accident. Uh, getting into to mobile games just in the beginning when it was still very small Java games and It just boosted by itself. So we sold the first company in 2005. We sold the second company in 2008 and we started the media by nature because the game industry is a combination of huge opportunity together with very loose environment of work so we started the media that currently have 39 people in three locations, in St. Petersburg, in Tel Aviv in Israel, and in Palo Alto, California. And we are a lifestyle company. We produce and publish our own games, and we manage to get to 200 million downloads. What have you learned over the course of the original to four in terms of monetization, overall strategy? Has anything changed? Anything stayed the same? So we've started with premium content back in 2010. That was the early days of mobile games. And we shifted slowly to demo into premium. And from then we moved to full freemium, I think four years ago. And the next stage from freemium was the consolidation that happened in the market. So basically we find ourselves, and Trial Extreme is a brand already. The first 10, 15 million downloads are coming just when we launch the game. But then you fight against the huge corporates, Disney, EA, Ubisoft. And in order to give a fair fight and to produce success in the freemium world, we moved and shifted to more database decision making on automatic basis rather than what we've done in the beginning, which was we think it will work. Let's give it a try and see how it works. And speaking of AI, I think that brings us to Game of Wales. <laughs> yes. Yeah, please tell me more about Game of Wales and what you're bringing to the table there. So that's a very interesting story. When we got to 100 million downloads, I think, this is the point that we understood that we can do much better within our purchases. So basically, we offer something that is taking the analytics and the actionables to the next stage. So the AI and machine learning are collecting the events from the game, learning the user behavior, build the prediction model, and based on that, it starts interactions with the user. It can be a discount, it can be a gift, it can be double coins, and then automatically checks the results of this interaction compared to a control group. You know, sounds Game of Wales is focused on in-app purchases. Yes. Improving that. What role does it play for someone who maybe has 50% or more ad monetization? So, Two parts to the answers. In in a purchase, we see around 20% increase for developers that implemented Game of Wells, and this is really early stage. We started, we launched the platform five weeks ago, so we are very uh, uh, happy with the results so far. But Game of Wells have two brains, call it like this. One is monetization, conversion, R poo poo, etc. The second one is anti churn. So the system identified the users that are going to churn. So it will flag a user that this is his last session based on experience it collected from other developers. So if this is his last session, the system acts in real time and try to prevent for this user from churning from the app. To wrap up, if I were able to take a peek at your phone, what game have you been playing? I'm playing Heroes of Might and Magic. That's a very old game from, uh, I think Ubisoft published it. Great. Doran, thank you very much. Appreciate the insights. Thank you very much.